Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Tonight as we gather at the in-person service, unlike our online service where we're using Holden Evening Prayer, we will be using the Longest Night service. This is the most wonderful time of the year. We hear song and we see all the lights and the celebration, the gatherings, the cookies, the music, hopes for snow. And while it's this wonderful time of the year, for some, it is the most painful time of the year. It's that first journey through the Christmas holiday season with the loss of a loved one. It's a time when the light grows more and more dim and people with seasonal effectiveness disorder um, are struck more and more. It's a time with some of the highest suicide rates during the year. This most wonderful time of the year can be some of the most painful and most despair-filled time of the year for others. And so we gather on this night, the longest night of the year, literally the longest night of the year. And we come and we join our brothers and sisters who are in deep lament and despair. And we lift up their yearnings, their cries of pain and hurt to God. And we lift up our own cries of despair, of pain and hurt to God. And we see on this longest day, the tradition of the people gathering together, yearning for the sun, the light to come back. And so the days will then grow, the nights will then grow shorter and the days will grow longer. And the light will continue to grow more and more just as it has throughout this Advent season, connecting us to the light of Christ out into the world, to the presence of Christ in the longest night. And so we share Psalm 88 as our text for today, a psalm I encourage you to spend some time with even after you listen to this message. O Lord, God of my salvation, when at night I cry out in your presence, let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles and my life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like those who have no help, like those forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit and the regions of dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me and you overwhelm me with all your waves. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a thing of horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. 
Every day I call on you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do the shades rise up to meet you? Do the shades rise up to praise you? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave? Or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Are your wonders known in the darkness? Or your saving help in the land of forgetfulness? But I, O oh Lord, cry out to you. In the morning my prayer comes before you. O oh Lord, why do you cast me off? Why do you hide your face from me? Wretched and close to death from my youth up. I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbor to shun me. My companions are in the darkness. People have been and are right now in this very exact position. A position of deep lament. A position of deep complaint to God, a position of utter despair, feeling, feeling hopeless and trapped in the pit of despair and darkness and pain and sorrow and hurt. Most of the Psalms, even the lament Psalms, have some moment where they reach back to God and they say, oh yeah, but you were with us at this time. This little glimpse of hope that comes out Psalm 88 doesn't appear to do that. It doesn't appear to do that. You heard that, didn't you? Didn't you hear all those, you have done this? Here I am, basically, is what the person is saying. And you have done all of these things to me. What's interesting is, you heard me use the you over and over. And it's the you that we find in our text from Psalm 88 that is both the reason for complaint and the reason for hope throughout our text. Our text begins, O Lord God of my salvation, who God is, the psalmist cries out, God, you are the one of my salvation. You are the one that rescued the people um, from out of Egypt. You are the one that continues to rescue your people. You are a God of salvation and wholeness and healing. That's who you are, the psalmist cries out. And yet, and yet, how many times have we found ourselves or others in places of deep darkness? Deep darkness that seemed to last far too long, much longer than it feels or seems acceptable, and we might even say is acceptable. And yet as we look at the stories of the past, we see again and again that people of God walk through the darkness of Gethsemane. They walk through this darkness and they walk out of that into this hill called Golgotha. That's the way that Jesus went. Not specifically who the psalmist was pointing to at that time, but we on this side of the cross and resurrection know the story. It was out of Gethsemane and out, out of the pit that he took the journey to Golgotha, the place of the skull. It is the place there that he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me. Psalm 88 or Jesus, either one takes no sense to pause and make excuses. It bears raw the human soul that has been pained and hurt and hopeless. And it's honest with God. You did this. Why have you forsaken me? In the you, in that darkness, that you resonates out into the world where all who are in darkness are held in the rescuing love of God. It's a quote from N.T. Wright. When you think about that on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is the very place there that God has met us in the most real way, in utter despair and fear and agony. God knows it, feels it, experiences it. And that's where God meets us and promises to meet us. 
so we can go back to our text in verses 10 through 12. Every day I called you on you, O Lord. I spread out my hands. Do you work wonders for the dead? Yes. Do the shades rise up to praise you? Yes, they do. Is your steadfast love declared in the grave? Yes, it is. Or your faithfulness in Abaddon or wherever the places you are? Yes, it is. Are your wonders known in the darkness? Yes, they are. Or your saving help in the land of what appears to be forgetfulness? Yes, God is there. Do you, do you, do you? Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes it lasts a long time, far longer than we would wish. And all we can do is cling to that you, 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 who is the God who raises the dead. Oh God, raise us on this longest night. Bring in your light, your wholeness, your salvation. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God bless